Welcome back to my sustainability journey. My name is Craig and I am on a mission to live a more sustainable urban life with ultimately the transition into a full homestead out in the little Karoo one day. Today is a much requested and much anticipated video and that is all about perennial basil, specifically how to make perennial basil pesto. So we're starting off out in the garden today, but ultimately we're going back into the kitchen in a, just a little bit. But before we do that, I'm surrounded by a purple perennial basil, a small white leafed one, and then this one in front of me, which I just got as an extra, which is also a white, white flowered one with a much bigger leaf. So there are three different types of perennials. They go by so many different names. I'm not even going to mention varieties, but ultimately, before we get into the recipe, how do you distinguish perennial basil from other ones? Well, the telltale sign are the woody stems. Perennial basil grows on woody stems and they will always be in flower. The bees absolutely love perennial basil and I did a really comprehensive video all about growing perennial basil, which is very popular and I will link it below, tag it above, so that please give that a watch. It tells you everything that you need to know about this amazing plant. So it will always be in flower, either white, pink or purple. There are woody stems and the woody stems will go all the way to the tops of the flowers. This one, as an example, is woody all the way here. This is brand new gro growth. But if we look at some of the older ones, there's woody growth all the way up to the tips. As soon as you prune that back, it stimulates new growth, off you go. These bushes grow incredibly quickly. They are vigorous growers. They can get one and a half meters by one and a half meters. So you will never need to buy pesto or basil again. Now, there are some very important things to remember when it comes to the flavor profile of perennial basil, which on that note, we need to make a transition into the kitchen. And I will start talking about flavor profiles, mixing, and how to make your own amazing homemade perennial basil pesto. Welcome into the kitchen. We have the primary ingredient, which is the perennial basil leaves. And what I'm using here is just about a cup. What's really nice about not only this recipe, but the way that you can work with the perennial basil, is you can do really small amounts. Remember when I spoke about the flavor profile of perennial, perennial basil? Well, if you have ever grown this plant, you'll know that just simply walking past it and letting it brush against your legs emits this intense basil aroma. So one thing you need to, to remember with perennial basil is it is potent. It's strong. It has a very strong basil flavor, but it does have a little bit of bitterness. So that is one thing you have to bear in mind. And that is why one of the key ingredients to making perennial basil pesto is a lot more lemon than what you would put into a sweet basil or a more traditional basil pesto recipe. So what do we need? We need about a cup or as much as you really want to of perennial basil leaves. Then what you can do, which is quite a nice little trick, is just take one leaf or as many as you want to of spinach or Swiss chard. What this is going to do is it's going to bulk up your pesto quite nicely without bulking up the intensity of the basil flavor then like i said very importantly you need lemon possibly even a whole lemon very important is olive oil you can use any oil but olive oil is just much healthier and then a key difference between traditional pesto and the pesto that we make here at home is you don't need pine nuts Pine nuts are as rare as hen's teeth, and when you find them, they are crazy expensive. So don't go out and find pine nuts. You can use any nuts, cashews, almonds, anything you want to. But what we actually like to use, 
which works really well. It's healthy and it's very cheap. It's black seeds. Black seeds are a really nice option to replace nuts with. Very oily. And when you put it in the Nutribullet and you blend it all together, you don't have a black seed to stick together. You actually blend it really nicely. And that's all that you need. It's really, really simple. You can dress up, you can dress down. Sorry, what I actually forgot. Salt and pepper. <laughs> Nothing is ever perfect without some salt and pepper. So what I want to tell you with this recipe and making pesto is there is no recipe. Sorry, I know you can be for a recipe, but there is no recipe. <laughs> what we're going to do instead and what you need to do is I firmly believe pesto is something that each person has their way of making it. What they do is they like specific textures. You can have very smooth, you can have chunky, you can have a range of different textures of basil pesto. Depending on what you like, you're going to add, you're going to remove, you're going to taste. Some people like slightly sour and acidic pestos. Other people like very powerful pestos with lots of basil flavor. Some people want to add in other spices. Some people like it very runny and put in more olive oil. So this is a recipe where these are your core ingredients, your, your leaves, your nuts, flax seeds, olive oil, salt and pepper, and then you experiment. You can make it runny, chunky, it's completely up to you. But in essence, what we're going to do is take your nutri bullets. You can see this one is really worse for wear. It's done a lot of different basil pestos, so it's stained a bit. But we've got a different one that we use uh, for non-food stuffs. Pop in the leaf. This one, I'm not going to use the stem because I don't want it to be too chunky. So I'm not even going to cut it. Just going to pull the central vein out. That's it. There we have our greens mixed in. I'm going to just cut up a uh, lemon. Make sure, obviously, that you don't get the pips because that's going to make it bitter. But you already knew that. So, And I'm just, for the sake of now, I'm just going to give it a squeeze. And stop. Because what I want to do is I want to taste this. And that's what's so nice about this recipe, you taste as you go. Sometimes lemons are slightly bitter, sometimes they're very sweet. And this recipe just calls for lots of tasting. And then just going to take a little pinch, literally a small pinch of flaxseed, not too much. Same with olive oil, I'm just going to drizzle some. There we go, not a little bit more. That I would probably guesstimate at about a tablespoon. A crack of salt, a crack of pepper. And that's it. Let's see how this one turns out. Well, if you could smell this, you would be in heaven right now. <laughs> okay, so I need to add a bit more liquid. This is way too chunky. Let me show you what chunky means. Okay. So I am going to put in some olive oil. That's probably about another tablespoon. Another squeeze of lemon. And I just want to get the con consistency right before I adjust the flavor. Please. Again, yeah, it's feeling there. We look starting to starting to create a nice little pesto. 
At this point, I'm just going to give it a little taste. Need some salted pepper. And add a bit more olive oil. Bring that in there, I promise. You can see it's creating a really nice texture now. It's starting to become very much like pesto. It's super bright green. And it's at this point that you need to start deciding what is it that you want to do with this? What is the texture that you're looking for? We like to use it in two main ways, which is this on toasties with cheese, red onion, and you can even put some, we like some, um, what is it called? Bacon and fig jam. So, so, so good. And then also one of our favorite dishes is just to use some of this basil pesto with um, pasta, pasta of any sort, with cut up cherry tomatoes and feta cheese. That's it. Really, really light, tasty pesto. And then of course you can use it with anything else. You could put it on pizzas, on flatbreads, um, anything that requires the pesto flavor. Except you don't need to grow the really finicky annual pestos. or well, not annual pesto, annual basil that goes to flower very quickly. And you can have abundance of it. You can really make as much pesto as you like. So um, I know you came here probably for a step-by-step -step recipe, but in essence, what it is, basil leaves, depending on the flavor you want, add in some chard or spinach, lemon to counter some of the bitterness within the pesto leaves, use flax seeds or nuts, whatever you want to, for some texture or some nuttiness. Salt, pepper, olive oil, that's it. You are going to mix and taste, mix and taste, mix and taste until you have the flavor you like and you get the consistency that you like. Me, us, we like it to be quite chunky and quite lemony. So that's why I don't want to tell you how much to put in because then you might just not like it. So experiment, play, very, very simple recipe. I suppose group of ingredients play around let me know in the comments below how you found it what your recipe combination is what your flow flavor profile is what you like i would absolutely love to hear from you if you haven't yet subscribed to my sustainability journey please do that every little bit helps you can also support me and the channel and the journey i'm on by buying me a coffee i love my coffees as i'm sure you do so thank you for watching this video if you haven't yet watched the perennial video, perennial basil video, please do that. It's going to show and teach you everything you need to know about perennial basil. And until next time, enjoy experimenting and finding the pesto combination that works for you.